bhakti is attained by undivided bhajan which means devotional practices now he is telling us that do bhakti incessantly this is the problem bhakti means engaging your mind in god when you do that the mind gets cleansed and then when you take the mind to the world the world is in three gunas then the mind gets soiled dirty now in the morning you get up and clean the mind with your bhakti and devotion you did sadhana for half an hour one hour whatever then after that you forget about god you close the cupboard bhagwan ji you stay in the cupboard now i'll do my worldly duties so one hour you were cleaning the mind and 23 hours you were dirtying the mind in other words the spiritual earning was 1 dollar and the spiritual loss was 5 dollars then how do you expect to progress if you wish to progress then you even if the earning is less the losses need to be minimized so that will keep on adding 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 that is why in the bhagavad gita lord krishna keeps on repeating sarveshu kaleshu remember me at all times satatam kirtayam tomam ananyas chintayam tomam yo mam smarati nityashah tesham nityabhiyuktanam nitya all the time arjun you have to remember me if there is one instruction that is repeated maximum times in the bhagavad gita it is this one instruction to always think of god the narad ji is emphasizing it here avyavritta bhajanat if you are serious about bhakti then it must be avyavrit you see some people do weekly bhakti most people do half yearly bhakti just now we celebrated the krishna janmashtami at the radha krishna temple so there were 10000 people who came the line was a thousand people long everybody knows for janmashtami for ram navmi i must come so twice you go that is half yearly bhakti so some people they go beyond so sunday to sunday but shri krishna says narad ji says no 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 not weekly bhakti nirantar bhakti always remember the lord so how will you remember him always when you feel that he is always with you and he is always watching you this is the practice of the presence of god there was once one mia sahab she read the namaz so much that his knees got spoiled so another mia sahab he said that you have read the namaz so many times did you meet allah and no what does that mean Allah did not even like one of your namaz said you have a point there i have read it so many times and allah has not shown himself means he doesn't like my namaz so he asked the second one does allah meet you the second one just in a boast said i meet him every day the first guy said next time when you meet him ask him whether he liked my namaz or not second guy said i will ask now where was the question of meeting allah he met him the other next day the first guy said did you ask allah whether he liked my namaz yes i went and asked him what did he say he said he did not even like one namaz of yours 
So the first guy said, really? He started dancing, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. The second guy thought, I am trying to put him down and he is dancing. Are Mia Sahab, you have not heard me properly. I am telling you that Allah did not even like one namaz of yours. He kept on dancing. After five minutes, he stopped and said, Mia Sahab, I heard you. Then why were you dancing? I was dancing because if Allah gave this decision, that he did not like even one namaz of mine. It means he was hearing my every namaz. So insignificant person like me, who is doing namaz five times a day for the last 60 years, Allah's nazar is on me all the time. And he is hearing every namaz of mine. Only then he is giving this decision. So I was just thinking, I am so blessed. He is always listening to me. That is why I was dancing. But that is the important point to note. You see, in the temple, we all realize the presence of God. He is there. You bow down before him. You become reverential. And when you go out, there is not no God there. So outside you can do anything you like. Charso BC, Chalaki, Makkari. Now this definition we have of God has to be expanded. God is in the temple, of course he is. But he is also outside. The whole world is his temple. So why do you say ki mandir mein badmashi mat karo? Why don't you say kahi bhi badmashi mat karo? Well, that is when you feel that God is always with you. He is always watching you. Then your bhajan will start becoming nirantar. In other words, at all times. Some people ask, Swamiji, I like to chant the name of God. When I go into the washroom, can I chant God's name there also? So somebody said, chi, 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 chi. In such a dirty place, you take God's name? But Narad Ji did not say, you chant the name of God always, but not in the restroom. Narad Ji is saying, you chant His name 24 hours a day. Let your bhajan be always. And Lord Krishna said the same. Sarveshu kaleshu. At all times, Arjun, you remember me. He did not say when you go to this place, then don't remember me. So there is no question of God getting tainted by taking his name in the restroom. Samaratha kahu nahi dosha gusai Ravi pavak sura sari ki nahi Just like the sunlight falls on the urine puddle The sun doesn't get tainted The urine gets cleansed and purified You put some dirty object in the fire The fire purifies it So Samarath the one who is all-powerful doesn't get tainted. There is no question of God getting impure by taking his name anywhere. But we will get purified. So in engaging in bhakti, there is no rule of sthan or of kal. In Karmakan, there were immense rules we discussed yesterday, right? You have to see so many things, six upkarans. Not even one syllable should be wrong. But when it comes to bhakti, all these rules fall away. If you like, you say Ram Ram. If you like, you say Mara Mara. God doesn't care. Murkho vadati vishnaya dhiro vadati vishnave tayor mulyam tu vaitulyam bhavagrahi janardana. 
वन हु इज अ संस्कृत पंडित से इज विष्णवे नम वन हु डजन नो संस्कृत देर आर सम पंडित हेरिडिटरी दे एक्चुअली डोंट नो संस्कृत बट दे आर कॉल्ड फॉर पूजा दे डू इट्स दे से विष्णाय नम रामाय नम कृष्णाय नम गोविंदाय नम विष्णाय नम बट गॉड डजन केयर वेद यू सेट विष्णाय नम और विष्णवे नम भावग्राही he cares for your bhav for your sentiment so this bhakti can be done everywhere and at all times and narad ji is saying avyavrit hanuman ji had said kah hanumant vipati prabhu soi jab tav sumiran bhajanan hoi the only calamity in the world is that moment when we have forgotten god so we need to remember him always and how do you remember him always you feel his presence with you there was brother lawrence of the resurrection he was a monk living in a monastery in england and he was an ordinary monk nobody really knew much about him outside he was maintaining diaries of his spiritual practice when he died they got those diaries and started reading them and they found so much of wisdom they published the diary his practice of the presence of god and they took his remains and replaced them in westminster abbey where the biggest vip's remains are placed so in that book practice of the presence of god he says if i were a preacher because he was not a preacher he was just doing cleaning of the ashram and all if i were a preacher i would preach nothing but the practice of the presence of god when you practice the presence of god you will automatically stop sinning why do people sin in new york the lights went out for a few days in the 1970s once and the amount of offenses that were done were completely beyond records shops were broken at night nobody is watching do what you like you see that is why it happens one person is going out at night to sin midnight he is thinking nobody is watching and as he is about to do his friend comes from behind are yaar what are you doing oh no 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 i was not feeling sleepy so i told me as well have a cigarette now he sees somebody is watching so he is not sinning and if you can think that god is watching always and he is going to note the karmas and give the results then where is the question of sinning and it is in our benefit to practice this and how do you practice just feel that he is there now in theory we all know he is ghat ghatwasi he is everywhere but we have not brought it in our conscious awareness the conscious awareness is i i i i now to that conscious awareness you add one more he is with me he is with me in other words i am not alone we are two dwa suparna sayuja sakhaya samanam vriksham parikhasva jate tayor anya pippalam swadvatya nashnan nanyo abhijakashiti this mantra is in the mundaka upanishad and it is also in the shvetashvatara upanishad it states there is a tree on the tree are two birds sitting the first bird is eating the fruit of the tree the second bird is its friend it is just watching the first bird is sometimes happy sometimes sad when it gets a sweet fruit it is happy when it gets a bitter fruit it is sad mostly it is getting bitter fruits the second bird is just watching if the first bird only turns around towards its friend 
all its miseries will finish. Here the analogy is given. The tree is the human body. The first word is the Jivatma. The second word is the Paramatma. Both are sitting inside. The soul is inside and the supreme soul God is also inside. Now the soul has got its back to God, right? And he is eating the fruit of karma in the body. So sometimes good karma, bad karma, the results come happy, sad, happy, sad, usually sad. All he needs to do is turn around. The second bird is watching and not interfering. Because he has a rule on surrendering, I will grace you. So, turning around means what? Just bringing God into your awareness. And moment you bring God in your awareness, your whole perspective will change. Now you will think, if he is there, this world is his, it is not mine. All these people are his little parts. Let me behave with them respectfully. All that I am doing is by His grace, there is no need to be proud. All that I am doing should be for His pleasure. So everything falls into place when you add the one. After that, all the zeros make sense. That is why this practice of the presence of God is one of the most important things. And Dharaj Ji has said, Avyavritta Bhajanat constantly engage in bhajan. This is doable, right? Is it? It is. The only thing is that you see, okay, Swamiji said to do it, then tomorrow you go and try and after one hour you are not able to remember, then you say, Swamiji, I tried, I could not do it. It's not like that. The practice will slowly, slowly grow on you. First time you tried and for an hour you forgot, then again you tried. But then keeping on practicing, slowly it will keep growing. Until that remembrance becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. And then that stage will come of Nirantar Smaran. Which Lord Krishna said, Sarveshu Kaleshu Maam Anusmar. If you wish to summarize the whole Bhagavad Gita in one fourth of a shlok, out of 700 shlokas, just one fourth of a shlok, it is this one, Sarveshu Kaleshu. At all times, Arjun, do your duty and remember me. 